Hello, what up guys? How you doing? It is Lasty here. Welcome today to a new episode of the FIFA 20 Ultimate Team Road to Glory, episode number 224 today. Uh, in today's episode, there are a few SBCs that I need to catch up on, that I need to complete, ready for a... Uh somewhat decent pack opening hopefully towards the end of the week when tot starts uh, and then i want to adjust the team slightly without spending any coins i'll show you how we do that throughout the episode if you do enjoy hit me with a thumbs up we are aiming for over 3,000 likes i think you guys can do that in just a few hours so thank you for your all of your support it genuinely means the world to me oh yeah we hit 450,000 subscribers as well my heart Thank you, guys. It means the world. I'm telling you. Uh, keep pressing that subscribe button if you are new around here. Because, hey, the next goal is 500k, right? Half a million. Can you imagine? I can't. That's, that's a while away, isn't it? That really is. Um, anyway, <laughs> getting stuck in then. Uh, so there was these, like, the, the league-specific challenge SBCs. Sorry if my hair is completely rubbish, by the way. It is getting long. It's like five weeks since a haircut now, getting towards that way anyway. I get it done every two weeks. Sigh. Uh, anyway, uh, there, are these, uh, there are these challenges that are league specific, which uh, I, I want to complete and I will complete and I have completed. But some of them, like my club is super bare bones, man. I got rid of a lot of stuff to try and buy those foot birthday players the other week or last week. Um, so to be able to actually like get these done... I actually I had to go out on the market and buy players. It just wasn't that. It wasn't super simple. Uh, so <laughs> it's it's not the cheapest of SBCs I've ever done. I tried to do them with first owner players. Sometimes I did just go out and spend the odd twelve hundred coins on a player or whatnot. Because the way that these SBCs are right now, EA are actually keeping the uh, rare gold and the non rare gold prices up fairly high, like slightly above that discard value, which is pretty interesting um i guess it's maybe because like when team of the season comes around we normally have that uh all the league specific upgrade packs every week and i wonder if they're trying to stop people like investing now maybe i don't know but uh either way it I, uh, I quite like that we're getting league-specific packs ready. I'm probably just going to open them up on Friday because there will be, like, players from the Bundesliga, players from the Prem, players from Serie A. Like, there will be players from those leagues, and I'm not just I'm not going to wait until each specific league is there just to open a premium gold pack that has five players from that league in it or something. I'd rather just get them open uh, alongside um, our rewards. So I took a little look at the division that we're in, and I think rank two is a potential, like there's potential for us to get rank two, uh, whether or not we bother or, and just stay rank three, because rank three actually gets you the 50k packs, the player packs, whereas rank two, you don't get any of them. You get more packs in total, but the best ones you get are rare mega packs, which are actually technically more valuable than a 50k pack, but I don't know if you get the same amount of players. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so... Uh, there's a chance that I might push up to rank two if I'm feeling like it because like who often really feels like playing rivals, right? Not me. Hardly ever. Uh, but we are going to play some in, in today's episode for you guys. I'm going to move the mic down a little bit as well. Ooh, squeaky. Um, <laughs> but we've currently got a whopping six packs ready for 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 friday and by that I mean we we got bronze two squad battles rewards and got one gold pack. So, uh, you know, things are, things are obviously looking really good for us. Now, we'll probably be up to nearly 15 packs if I uh, if I do, like, marquee matchups, get my rewards. Like, it would be up to a fairly decent amount of packs with some fairly good packs. But it's going to cost me coins to get that done because there's no way I can complete a marquee matchups without opening any packs. Like, I don't have the players in my club. So, I will have to go out and buy those players uh, to complete the SBC. But it will genuinely be worth it because normally, marquee matchups cost between 20 and 30k and you get like 100k's worth of packs back in coin value. Uh, whether or not you make that back is another thing. But if TOTS is out, I'd love to be able to have the chance of packing a TOTS and making some sort of bank. So, as you just saw live there, I've, I've adjusted the team around. Um... To include this man, Fred. Uh, people call him Pastor Fred. 
Is that because of that image on social media that I see? Um, but yeah, like uh, 89 rated Fred. He does look like a very intriguing card. Obviously, I chose him as what I thought was the correct decision from the level 30 rewards the other day. So I wanted to put him into the starting lineup. Uh, and what that does is it actually pushes Atal up to Cam, which I'm totally fine with. He's a great, great player there. Um, and... and and I'll let Fred be like the balanced CDM, so like the box-to-box -box kind of player that has a little bit more freedom. Uh, he'll be on full chemistry. Uh, Tierney and Neymar will both be on seven. I think Overmars has to be on six. Uh, but to be honest, I, 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 don't, I don't really mind. I might even do it so that I put Tierney on six because for the last weekend league, I think I've, I was playing Tierney on five and he was still a complete beast. So uh, even a slight chemistry boost for him will be will be uh, better than what we used last week. Um, so it pulls Zola out of the squad and puts Overmars back in. We could obviously take him out straight away for over uh, for for Bernardo Silva, Lozano, Ken, or Zola. Like any of those four players could come on for Overmars. But uh, <coughs> excuse me, I think for the first half he'll actually be. Completely fine. I think. I think it'll be six chem. We played Havertz on six chem for a while last week, and he was he was fine as well, weren't he? He had his best stint in the weekend league on six chemistry. So here's a visual for you of how I want the team to actually play in game. Um, Douglas Costa up top. If you haven't got involved with that movement yet, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, no, you might not want to spend coins right now. It might it's a fairly volatile time on the market, so uh, maybe hold on to to those coins. But I do see him starting to rise up again in price as the weekend league does approach. Um, my like my terrible uh, transfer market advice or trading advice is that this is how I see it going anyway. Obviously. Foot birthdays and the whole market just completely like plummeted, didn't it? At the very start of the weekend league when, when tops got announced, right? So everything went crazy down. But then it had that little spike back up again when people realized, oh, wait, these are going lower than they really should do. And then at the end of the weekend league, they plummeted back down again uh, to, our, to where now they're starting to rise up a little bit. And then kind of hold that like it's still at a lower price than they, they should be. Um... So what I would see happening is I see the players starting to head up towards, you know, like slightly higher prices as the weekend league nears. And then maybe there's another little crash as the as the tots drops. And then I think everything will probably go back up because um, if, if all of these promos this year have shown you anything, it's that when popular players come out, they are crazy more expensive than we'd ever anticipated at the very start. Uh this year and then actually they continue to rise so i don't see tots being very affordable players whatsoever especially if the likes of like felipe anderson and joe gomez and stuff get in those are going to be like million coin players i i don't know maybe maybe they won't be but that, that's my terrible transfer market opinion uh so far oh that coffin fit was so bad i feel like i've had to edit it out apologies if it makes me look like i've just been crying because we had a coughing fit but anyway we went 1-0 down in this Rivals match to uh, probably one of the most generic meta squads you've ever seen in your life. But uh, <laughs> we kind of turned it around really quickly. We found ourselves 4-1 up after like 30 minutes of FIFA time. So good turnaround from, from me right there. I was going to just quit at 1-0 because I thought, oh, what's the point? But I'm glad I didn't uh, because one, I wasn't really going for Rivals points here. I just, I just did want to play to... Uh, I, I was in the mood to play. Normally, one or two games of Rivals is enough to get you out of the mood of playing. So I figured I'd just do that until I didn't want to play anymore. Um, two goals from two shots, by the way. My keepers genuinely never save anything. I don't know what to do anymore. Mid Van der Sar, Team of the Year Allison. For some reason, they like to save absolutely nothing. Do I have broken keepers? Possibly. I mean, it doesn't help when I... Gift him a goal by passing it out for, from Van der Sar. That's, that's completely on me. Um, but yeah, he started to push his way back into this game. So I was like, no, we're not, not having any of that. Douglas Costa's going to have to do some work. Fred misses that sitter. Again, I think that's probably on me from the direction that I was hitting it. But um, maybe just a little bit of a negative to go on his record. Because obviously today is like a little mini review. I want to talk to you about Fred. There's no clips of him apart from that shot. Um, but I just want to give you an idea of a, a flavor of how I thought he played as the bal uh, as the balanced like box to box CDM player and I thought genuinely really good like I brought him on as a sub on 5 chem 
in the weekend league like maybe twice maybe three times and I didn't really rate him. I would have preferred to brought to have brought on Furlong Mendy in a CDM spot like, like I'm used to doing. Uh, Fred does hit the bar again there, though. So he's hit the woodwork twice in this game. Like, his shot isn't actually that bad. Um, and I think he's uh, he's one of those players which you could play as, like, a uh, an attacking centre mid. I wouldn't put him at Cam. And maybe not have him as your, like, complete holding defensive midfielder. But what he is is someone that in the, in the middle of that. So let him push forward a little bit, but not too far and not too deep. Um, and you'll get <clears throat> a solid, solid player out of him. So he's not particularly strong. He's fairly quick, but like a lot of people bring Bustos on, a lot of people bring Tierney on, a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of very, very fast CDM type players that people bring on. Uh, so he's not as quick as them, but I think he's he's slightly more balanced. Like obviously he's got the stats kind of everywhere. Um, and with the right chemistry style, if you are playing him on 10 chemistry, if you do like a Guardian or a Sentinel or something, something that ups the defensive stats um, and ideally the physicality stats as well. So a Sentinel would, would be ideal from, from my perspective. Oh, look at this, by the way. Don't you just love 11 men behind the ball um, and just jockeying and, and not moving towards you? That's fun. Um, <clears throat> anyway... Yeah, he, if you play him like that with a Sentinel on him, I, I think you'll get a lot out of him. It pushes his defensive stats and physicality stats up to uh, pretty good levels where his like aggression is, is pretty high. He's, his uh, tackling ability is very good. Um, and he feels like... Uh, he feels quicker than his stats suggest. And I think that you might get a great play player out of him if you do decide to take him from your level 30 rewards. Obviously, you've only got a few more days to choose it. And most of you, I would say, that are daily viewers and maybe avid players of the game have probably already got to level 30 um, <clears throat> if you grind the game out even to the the fairly like like mediocre level that I do I've obviously got him and I've got 10,000 spare XP as well um, but yeah I think uh, I've come up against Carrasco a couple of times and he's been okay I've not come up against Belotti, but the the people that have said that they've come up against him said that they got destroyed by him. So apparently he's quite a good striker, uh, but you, you just get them slightly more meta, I think, with Fred. Four-star skills, uh, agile, like his agility and his balance and stuff are phenomenal. And he's short as well, so that center of gravity is really low. So he's going to be able to turn really well on the ball, um, changes of direction, whether that be when you're on the ball or even off the ball to try and make the tackles and stuff. <clears throat> You're getting a getting a solid option out of this Brazilian. So yeah, uh, we've we've won a couple of games here, which is absolutely fantastic, and 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 gives us a fair amount of rank points as well. Which, as you can see here, brings me up to um, nearly ten thousand, and uh, and rank two was about eleven k at the time. I reckon if I got that up to about twelve k, maybe twelve and a half k, I'd finish in rank two and get those packs so we might do that in tomorrow's episode we might not it all depends but i come up against a really nice road to glory here this guy obviously fully grinds the game um <clears throat> was a viewer as well and messaged me afterwards and uh i didn't really stand a chance in this one if i'm honest because he scores this with pele like pele and cruyff on this game are unbelievable especially cruyff i noticed like he, again, it's five star, five star, isn't it? Like, and, and you can get cheap versions of that by getting a Neymar, by getting Douglas Costa, uh, and uh, even like Di Maria and Ale uh, Saint Maximan and stuff. But uh, yeah, Cruyff seems to be like kind of the real deal. Uh, so I went one nil down to a lovely volley from Pele. So there's no real complaints there. Uh, and this guy was trying to like skill me so it, it led me to trying to do a few more scoops and maybe a little rainbow flick here and there. Um, but I could not break this defense down. Uh, he had his tactics set up really well. Uh, he had a lot of players back, as you can see. There's not much space to move there. Um, but I still respected it because as he was going forward, he was he was playing well and skilling nicely and, and just completely skinning me. You can see from this goal right here, uh, he gets a little bit lucky to hold the ball with Mane there. But he just turns me. I, I, I did the goalkeeper movement because I thought he was going to shoot near post where he was at the time. <clears throat> but then he completely turned me. Hits me with a sombrero flick right there. And I tell you what, if that goes in, he's he's absolutely loving life and running away celebrating. Uh, so we messaged a little bit after the game. Uh, this one's going to end 
two nil. I'm not going to be able to get a chance to score. So he said, uh, I think he said, GG, love the series or something. So I appreciate that. And uh, GG's to you, brother. But next time, let me score because I just played 90 minutes of rivals for uh, 150 rank points. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. Uh, but of course, I don't actually expect people to let me score or anything. Um, there's a game that I've uh, skipped out here, actually, because we ended up losing uh, a game before that, but just... It was more toxic, so I didn't really want to put it in. There's no point. I actually rage quit that game. Um, but yeah, we, we stayed the 90 minutes in this one, so I don't really care sometimes. If people are playing nicely uh, and not just like fully sweating it out, then I'll, I'll stay in the game. Like It was a pretty even game. I just didn't man I, I wasn't able to score. Uh, his clinicalness from Mane, Cruyff, and, and Pele was just what you know, did it for him here. So only a, a measly 150 rank points, but it does bring me up to 10 points. Six, I think that was uh, points that there's a fair few there and we're getting closer towards rank two as I said I might play towards it um, you got you guys are just gonna have to bear with me a little bit for the next couple of days there's no real content is there tots is coming but there's a couple of days until there and I upload every single day so rather than just taking a couple of days off and saying see you at tots uh, I will I wing it somehow but just bear in mind that the videos might be a little bit shorter for the next couple of days or the content might be a little bit more stretched out just because there isn't much. Um, my overall end thoughts from this episode though are that I think Fred's a really good option. I might actually try uh, to properly use him this weekend. No, I'd actually quite enjoy that I think. So uh, we can it pushes Atal up to a slightly more of a free roll as well which I love. And uh, we might we might be able to do something about that right wing spot. I'm, not ju I'm just not sure yet. Um, I would put Bernardo Silva there on 8 chemistry, but it drops Neymar down to like 5, which is a problem. Uh, so yeah, guys, do me a favour, hit that thumbs up button. We are aiming for 3,000 likes. Don't forget, of course, to uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I thank you for that. And of course, follow me on Twitter, Instagram. The links are down below. Sorry for all the coughing and spluttering so far today. I think hay fever's getting to me a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I am feeling all good. Don't you worry about that. Uh, and I hope you guys are as well. Staying fit, healthy, and safe. Take it easy. Catch you tomorrow. Peace.